Hey guys, I'm Dahlia and happy Hanukkah. So today I'm teaching you how to make the best gluten-free fried sufganiyo ever. I cannot wait for this. Basically, I have not had a donut in four years and I finally made such a good gluten-free donut this past week and I have to share the recipe with you guys. Every single year, I share a new donut recipe for the most part, I think I've done it every year. And I've shared baked donuts before, fried, and now we're doing the gluten-free version that is fried. So it's going to be extra, extra good. These are the best sufganiyo you are going to ever have if you are gluten-free. Sufganiyo are, are donuts, by the way, if you're wondering. Just so excited to share this recipe with you. And now, let's get making them. To begin, you're gonna microwave the water for about 30 seconds or until it's very warm, closer to the hot side, but not boiling. You don't want it to boil. Then, you're going to add in some instant yeast and sugar. The sugar is gonna help the yeast activate much quicker. So, oops, got some sugar in there. Now, you just wanna give this a mix, and we're gonna set it aside for five minutes. Don't touch it. I know you're gonna feel that you're gonna wanna mix it more, but don't, just leave it, set it aside, and forget about it. So next, we're gonna simply add all the liquid ingredients into a bowl of a stand mixer. Now, you could do this with a handheld mixer. I just find it way easier this way, and the mixer just does all the work for me. So I'm gonna add some oil, eggs, and you wanna make sure your eggs are at room temperature. It's very important when you bake to have room temperature eggs some maple syrup, or you could also add just more granulated sugar. Apple cider vinegar. I know it sounds very weird, and that's a weird ingredient to put into a donut dough, but I promise it's going to just make the dough taste great. I have here some molasses, and this is just gonna make the dough taste even better, so don't leave it out. And lastly, of course, we need some vanilla extract. So I'm gonna mix this until everything's combined for about a minute. Now take a look at this yeast mixture. It is so fluffy and it's time to add it into the bowl and mix everything up. Okay, now it's time to add in the ingredients that are gonna make this donut extra, extra fluffy and soft and not taste gluten-free when it happens to be gluten-free. So we have here two cups of tapioca starch this is our key ingredient here, along with some white rice flour. Do not use a gluten-free flour in place of this. It will not work like it's supposed to. Next, we have xanthan gum. This is gonna help it give it a really, really nice texture. And then, of course, you just need a little salted everything, so I'm going to add that in. Now, I'm going to mix this up, and you're gonna see it's gonna turn into a really thick batter. So this is how your dough should look. It's really more like a batter. It's not super doughy, but it's thick, but it's not close to how a regular donut dough would look. Now it's time to transfer all of this delicious batter into a piping bag fitted with a really large circle tip, or you could just put it into a large, like a gallon or two gallon Ziploc and snip off the end to be about an inch. So, just scoop that in. And don't fill it up all the way, only fill it up about three quarters of the way or else everything is just going to ooze out of the bag. You could always refill your bag after you pipe out a few donuts. I have here a pan lined with some parchment. I'm going to cut the parchment into large squares. I learned this on Instagram from Naomi TGIS and she was testing out donuts and she learned that if you put the parchment paper square into the, into the hot oil with your donut, it won't mess up the shape when you touch it. Because you know sometimes you'll touch the donut after it's risen and put it into the oil and you'll mess with the shape, something will break. This way, you just put the parchment paper into the oil and then you could slowly take it out once it detaches from the donut. And I thought it was genius. So thank you so much, Naomi. And you can also buy pre-cut parchment paper squares, but I just don't have them. If your parchments just curl up when you put them on the pan, just do a light, light spray of some pan and this will ensure that the squares will stick to the pan. Now what you're going to do is pipe really, really large circles of dough. This batter made 10 donuts, so you could either get probably six much larger donuts out of it, 
or 10 like this, or if you make really many ones, you could probably get 15 or 20, which is also super cute. You wanna just dip your finger into water and pat down on the center so that you don't have a little spitz at the top of the donut. I'm going to stick these in the freezer for about one hour before frying them just so that they are set, so they are much easier to work with, and then we're gonna fry them up. Please don't make them and then assume they're gonna be good for the next three days. They are best if you eat them the day of, and if you wanna eat them the next day, just stick them in the microwave or in the oven for a little bit and they'll taste pretty good. But I promise you, they are the best the first day, so please take my advice and only make them on the day that you plan to serve them. So. I'm gonna go freeze this for an hour and then I'll see you soon. So I have some oil heating up here. It's almost at 350, which is exactly how we want it to be. It's at 330 now, so almost there. But let's go over a few things first. Number one is that you should change your clothes because you're probably gonna stain yourself. It could be, I'm just a very messy person, but somehow, even though oil isn't splattering everywhere when I cook, that would be crazy, but somehow I get oil all over me. So put on something that you don't mind staining. I had the shirt for like seven years already. So although I like it, if it gets stained, it's okay. So, or just put pajamas on. I usually bake in my pajamas, just not for the video. <laughs> so then change your clothes. And then you also wanna take your donuts out of the freezer at least 30 minutes before you make them so that they could soften. Then also have a place prepared with paper towel. And then also have some type of scooper thing. I don't know what this is called. I should know. <laughs> um, so that you can put your donuts in and out of the oil. And also, having a pair of tongs is really helpful so that you could take the paper out of the oil when it's ready to be taken out because we're going to be putting the donuts into the oil with the paper and then after like a minute, when it separates from the paper, you could just take the paper out and discard it. I'm frying each donut for about two to three minutes on each side. You want it to be really golden brown. So now you can take the paper out and be careful that you don't drip anything on yourself. I forgot to mention before, but it is very important to use a candy thermometer so that you know how hot your oil is because sometimes it can be too hot and sometimes it could be too cool. Like because I fried a few donuts already, the temperature went down, so now it's at about 340. So I'm just letting it heat up a little bit more until it's at 350 again, and then I'll add more donuts in. So I have here some jelly and I'm going to inject it from the side and just squeeze the jelly out. <gasps> Look at all that. Let's try it. Mm. I don't think any excuse to eat these donuts. They are so good. Frying is done. So make sure you turn the stove off because you don't want to keep that oil on for longer than needed. And now let's just take a look at these. All of these donuts look so good. And you could either fill them with jelly like I showed you before or you could also put custard, and I have a custard recipe. I'll leave it up here in the little eye. You can click on it. You could also just put any other filling. And I love, no matter what I fill my donuts with, to dust them with a little bit of confectioner sugar. It is the perfect topping. Oh my God. I just had about two donuts and I feel like too much oil. I didn't even have dinner yet. I'm gonna be having dinner soon. So, and it's like 10.30 at night, but it's all worth it. I, I love making the donuts, they're so good. It's like the best gluten-free treat on earth. So if you're gluten-free and you're scrolling through my channel and you're like, what should I make? And you wanna have something super indulgent, make this because you are going to love it and it's gonna remind you of how it was before you were gluten-free, or if you were always on a gluten-free diet, you'll get a taste of what it's like to eat like real, yummy, indulgent, wheat-filled food, although there's no wheat in this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. Please give it a try. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below because this is a little bit of a different recipe. And also let me know in the comments, what is your favorite filling? I'd love to hear whether it's chocolate, custard, jelly, or if there's anything that's not on my list because I'm being very limited. There are three things. Let me know if you have anything that you love to put into your donuts. And thank you again for watching. Get the full recipe on itsbrainingflour.com. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you wanna see more healthier, this isn't healthy, but 
gluten-free and dairy-free recipes and some healthy recipes, most of mine are, um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you'll see them every single week. So thank you again so much for watching and I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my donut. Bye.